Hello, I'm Pam, and this is Friday Sews. So how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing okay. So, what have I gotten done this week? Let me go ahead and tell you. So, now a couple videos back, I showed um, a fabric, a uh, fabric of this, which is great. And I had made her another shirt, but so what I did is I went and I picked up New Look six nine zero one. And I made that view right there. But then I also added the sleeve bands onto the sleeves. So what I have is I finished her shirt today. Yep, today. Basically, what I had to do is just sew on the sleeve bands and sew down the top um, back band piece. But here it is. And it's kind of sheer, as you can tell. And what I did for the sleeve bands, because this was like less than a yard of fabric. Well, maybe it was at least one yard. Let's see. Yeah, because I think it was one yard, and it called for one and one-fourth yard. But I was able to make it work. So, the sleeves. Um, I have this little sleeve band here. And it is basically the selvage of the fabric, but it just really adds this nice little texture, you know, little accent to it. So we have this, and it's for my sister. So I finished that one, which is amazing. Okay, and then last Friday, I also talked about um, this pattern here, the Mimi G, and I have cut out my pattern pieces. Well, I traced them out, and then I cut them out. So I have this. This is the front yoke piece, and when I had talked about doing this project I had mentioned that I was going to do a Pokemon jacket like I was going to take and add Pokemon all over the jacket so what fabric I am using I'm using this fabric I decided it would look great it's like a um, it's just a great fabric anywho <laughs> I, I love it. So, this is a front yoke piece. And this one, I have one Pokemon on. And I have Sand True. Doesn't that look cool? So, I have that one. And I have the other front yoke piece. And then I have the back yoke piece. For the back and what I'm making is an extra small for like a teen but who knows I don't know who's gonna wear it but I have these a little Tanglia and Tokopi and then a little flower Pokemon I don't know the name of it and then I have a Jigglypuff the other one, whichever one that one is. This one is Eevee. And there's that one. That one might be Ninetales. And there's this one. And then there's Farfetch. We're showing them on the screen. They look more amazing. Seriously. And then I have, this is a back panel piece. So I have Pikachu and Squirtle that I've done a variegated thread with. I have Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Ditto. So I did a couple different Ditto designs. I did a shiny Ditto and a pink Ditto on some scrap fabric. 
so I could kind of tell which one would look better. And my son told me that the pink ditto looked a lot better than what the blue shiny ditto would look. And that's if you're even familiar with Pokemon. And then I have, oh, and then I have my other sleep piece, which I have Arbok, um, Aerodactyl, Onyx one. I don't think it's a real Onyx. I think it's the evolved form of Onyx. And then I have Psyduct, the Owl, the Hoot Hoot, and then the Diglett. So yes, I have those. So I've got that done. I still have more pieces that I was looking at embroidering. Like I have, this is the undersleeve. So I have that much space on that undersleeve that I can do. And then I have this one is the front piece. So it's a front piece that will attack to the front bands and stuff. And so I have a lot of that space. And what I've done with this is, as you can see, I have like drawn on the fabric with um, some friction pens so that it will show me where my lines are and what kind of space I'm working with. And then I also have, this is a side back piece. And then, which I kind of wonder if it would be better to attach these pieces and then finish up with the, like the embroidery. And then I have like the front middle, which the panel here and where the pocket piece would go, which isn't a whole lot of room. And then this is the side front. And so here we have a pocket piece like this. So we have a, you can see it, we have a pocket piece and then the other part of the front pocket. So this just might be easier to attach it all and then finish up with the um, like more Pokemon embroidery designs. But we'll see how that goes. So I have changed my room around just a little bit because I needed to make sure that I had enough space for my embroidery machines. So where I have my computer sitting right now, right behind it, I have my sewing machine that I use on a regular basis. But then back there, um, I have my embroidery machines. So, I, what you do? doing a video. Oh. So I was going to show you um, my table. And I'm using my computer, obviously. So I have the one machine there. And what I've done is I've just taken a piece of fabric to cover over the um, machine until I can get a cover made. And then I have my other machine here, my SE625, the one that I did an unboxing for before. And then right here, I have a little drawer container thing that I keep threads in. And then I have extra bobbins. And then I also have this little thing here that I have some thread in. And then the other accessories and stuff necessary for using with my biking. And then I have my other brother machine sitting there that I have. And I've kind of done this on an angle because I like it better that way. It's easier to manage. 
I have um, purchased a extra long table, like a six foot table from Walmart, um, so that I would have plenty of space. And I was kind of concerned with how wide it was because it was like the 30 inches wide. But after working with it, I've decided that I really like it. And then up here, I have my threads. I used to have other various threads up there, but I have um, chosen to just do like my embroidery threads um, over there. Oh, and then also I have these embroidery threads here. And I have been collecting those for years. You know, those ones I, you know, just every sporadically I will just get some. So, yeah, I've done a lot of rearranging. And then I've just kind of put my ironing board against that way so that I have this aisle clear. So some just rearranging. So my machine is just like that. Then I've just taken this fabric here and I just cover it up at night. And then I need to make a cover for that one that will cover the whole machine. Make a cover for this one to cover the whole machine. That's like a fitted cover. I have the dimensions to make one. I'm just still working it out in my mind. But yeah, so that's what I have been doing that is, you know, been having fun. So also, let me show you the embroidery designs I was doing. All right, which I don't have all of my threads on my designs cut yet, but that's okay. I just wanted to try and see, you know, if it was going to do a decent design. So I have this one. This one is Cassie from Dragon Tales, but I have done a purple um, body. And as you can see, sometimes the digitizing on these is like off. Look how off that is. So I'm not exactly happy about how, like off that looks it's almost like it needs to have like a little bit more of that purple just to fill it in but then i also have this dragon so most of these are going to be dragon designs because that's what i had on the file and i just wanted to do some i have this cool one and i've used it a variegated thread for these like i've done a variegated yellow and then I have a variegated black that goes from like gray to black and stuff. And so it changes, like makes it look cool. And then I also have a variegated black on this one. So it has the variegation. So it just kind of changes. Which is really cool. And then on this other one, I have done like a metallic thread, so it's nice and shiny and really cool. And then I've done a variegated for the yellow. And then on this top part, like then I did just a regular black along like the scales and stuff. But then on this top part, I think my machine had a little bit of an issue. I think the, I don't know for sure but it like caught and so it was pulling the bottom thread up and messing things up just a little bit and then this one is just a mess up so that's no big deal and then i was trying to embroider my son's names on their batman blankets so i have my son's batman blanket here um, my eight-year-olds and I was trying to embroider his name on it and then um, the, 
thread that I had wound on the bobbin because I had wound some embroidery thread on it instead of some bobbin thread and it kind of messed things up a little bit but I was trying to see if I could find where I'd unpicked it all but maybe oh no this one is my little boys this is my four-year-olds so I haven't done anything with that one yet the other one back there, I'm still working on unpicking where it messed up. Go figure. So, is there anything else to talk about? I don't think so. Other than I'm trying to help my sister um, keep her house. She's had some financial trouble. And so, me and my husband have taken it upon ourselves to help her out because we want her to continue to be able to live in her home so we're doing that other than that we're doing okay we're surviving all right well i will keep you updated on my pokemon jacket it's about time to um, finalize the cutting out pieces because as I mentioned I do have it the outline of the pattern piece um, um, sorry the outline of the pattern piece drawn on there so that I can make sure that doing these designs and then also with this as you can see I have like these little boxes around because basically I put the um, interfacing on and then I'm just floating my fabric on top and so it's stitching around the edges of what where the design is going to be and then I will unpick the designs once those are finished. So yeah, and which works out really good. I like that floating feature that the Viking has because I haven't been able to figure out how to do it on the brother and if it does do it, it would more like be where I would have to be sewing it onto the fabric itself and not being able to float the fabric. So therefore I would basically have to use the basting spray to spray on to make it stick so that it would stay put while it's embroidering but I really don't want to do that so we'll see what happens all right well this was Friday sews and have a wonderful day and talk to you later bye